And the alternative is you get born into an insane world. One that is doomed to die because it has just burned a hundred million years worth of trees in a single century. Which but one do you like? I, I think I like this one. It's a very weird thing that when you find yourself on a Titanic and you see this iceberg and it looks like we are not going to miss it. And a lot of people are in denial and most of the counter arguments sound like denial to me. They don't seem to be rational arguments. And the other thing is we are born on this Titanic. Without this Titanic, we wouldn't have been born. We wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be talking. We wouldn't be on the internet. We wouldn't do all the things that we enjoy. And we are not responsible for this happening. It's basically, uh, if we had the choice, we would probably try to prevent it. But when we were born, uh, we were never asked when we want to be born, in which society we want to be born, what incentive structures we want to be exposed to. We have relatively little agency in the entire thing. Humanity has relatively little agency in the whole thing. It's basically a giant machine that's tumbling down a hill and everybody is frantically trying to push some buttons. Nobody knows what these buttons are meaning, what they connect to. And uh, most of them are not stopping, it's tumbling down the hill. Is it possible that artificial intelligence will give us uh, an escape latch somehow? So, the, you know, there's a lot of worry about existential threats of, uh, of artificial intelligence. But what AI also allows, in general forms of automation, allows the potential of extreme productivity growth that will also, perhaps in a positive way, transform society uh, that may allow us to inadvertently to return to the more to the same kind of ideals of closer to nature that's represented in hunter-gatherer societies uh, you know that's not destroying the planet that's not doing overconsumption and so on I mean generally speaking do you have hope that AI can help somehow I, I think it is not fun to be very close to nature until you completely subdue nature. So our idea of being close to nature means being close to agriculture, uh, basically forests that don't have anything in them that eats us. See, I, I, I mean, I, I want to disagree with that. I, I think the niceness of being close to nature is to being fully present and in, like, where, when survival becomes your primary, not just your goal, but your whole existence. It, I mean, th that is a, you know, I'm not just romanticizing, I can just speak for myself. I am self-aware enough that that is, um, that is a fulfilling existence. I that's one that's very... I prefer to be in nature while and not fight for my survival. I think fighting in your for your survival while being in the cold and in the rain and being hunted by animals and having open wounds is very unpleasant. Well, there, there's a contradiction in there. Yes. I and you, just as you said, would not choose it. But if I was forced into it, it would be a fulfilling existence. The, the, yes, the, the, if you are adapted to it, basically if your uh, brain is fed up in such a way that you get rewards optimally in such an environment, and there's some evidence for this that for a certain degree of complexity, basically people are more happy in such an environment because it's what we largely have evolved for. In between, we had a few thousand years in which I think we have evolved for a slightly more comfortable environment. So uh, there is probably something like an intermediate stage in which people would be more happy than they would be if they would have to fend for themselves in small groups in the forest and often die, um, versus uh, something like this where we now have basically a big machine, a big mortar in uh, which we uh, run uh, through concrete boxes and uh, press buttons and machines and uh, largely um, don't feel well cared for as the monkeys that we are. <laughs>